This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Sonoran Heat, the Savory, the S&P Bud, and the Ope. Can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to check out his three great packages, such as this Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which is one of each of the 14 seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, were they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a micro batch, fresh roasted, roast to order, world class, Ohio based coffee roaster. They are based out of Toledo or more specifically Perrysburg, Ohio. They're fair trade certified. They're USD or USDA organic, uh, veteran owned, mom and pop owned. You get free shipping over $50, K-Cups available, gift cards available, uh, and you can save money with a subscribe and save service. I, and what, what else do you guys need? Do you need anything else? I, I think, that, that does that check all of the, I think, I don't know if there's a box left unchecked there. I think that's all the boxes. So if you're not convinced and maybe you want to find out what some of the individual coffees are, stick around for the next few ad reads. Or you can just go to ironbeancoffee.com for yourself. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What is up, YouTube and Discord? What's Nomad, up, YouTube and I Discord? You have your audio turned off. Me? Nomad. Oh. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I don't know if that came through or not. Did that come through? Just, just the, not the. I have that. The, I have that audio filtering on, so it's very good at doing good tonight, Michigan Bucknut. How are you? Yeah, um, I mean, we're a little rattled. We're recording this on a Wednesday night. Um, to be honest, we're a little, we're a tad bit, a tad bit rattled just because of everything going on in Washington D.C. at the moment. Uh, we considered delaying the recording. Um, but we're going to do it. We're it's just going not to what right you want to see. And that's not what we're here to talk about. So we're not going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the national yep. championship game. That's what we're here yes, to sir. talk about. But know that we are aware of it and affected by it. And um, that's that's it. But that's All not right. what we're doing let's get here into today. the show, Jerry. Let's, let's 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 do the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Oh, um, hearts and minds in DC at the moment. But uh, as I was just telling the YouTube people, that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, you know, we are here. Yeah, to talk about the national yes. title game. Thank you for keeping me on are. track, Kyle. We are here, Jared. It's it's that meme where it's the guy says, "Hey, hey, look where we're hey, at. Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> look at us now. Hey, look, look at us, us now. Look at us. Started. I mean, and in all honesty, started the season. Honesty, Jared started the season August. with no season. Season canceled. Since, yeah. Since what we saw back in August, and Wokens asking the parents and the other ten people who made a trip to Chicago, what the heck are you guys even doing? Yeah, come on, Dan Woken. What are we even doing here? Oh, I'm not. I'm not one to hear to tell people what they can and can't do with their free time. Dan Woken said, but "What exactly do those Ohio State and Big Ten parents think they're doing, and what exactly are they hoping to accomplish?" That's the question Dan Woken had asked. Where they are hoping to play on January 11th. Yeah, which is exactly what they're doing. Hopefully. No, uh, as of now, as they of are now, playing. no, uh, all, all signs, uh, as, as we're recording this, um, mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of rumors floating around about Ohio state potentially, um, 
delaying the game until the 19th because of COVID issues. I think those issues, uh, the possibility of the game being delayed actually pushed back an entire week, I always felt was drastic and overreported and mostly ru- rumor mill stuff. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't infections on the team right now and that there won't be new players out of the game because there there are new infections. There will be new players out of the out of the game. Um, but the game is far is unless again, we're recording this on a Wednesday night, unless something drastic happens in the next few days. Uh, unless the equation changes a lot in the next few days, we fully expect this game to happen. And if it doesn't, I'll just clip out this beginning part and take everything we say afterwards and release it as the national championship preview. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sure. I was expecting more of a reaction from you on that one, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Yes, Nomad. I know. I need more stuff behind me. It's it's coming. But I mean, I got, I got Brutus here. Mm-hmm. I got Urban Meyer here. Mm-hmm. I got Braxton Miller. Mm-hmm. I got the 2002 national title here. Uh-huh. I got Woody here. Uh-huh. I got a signed autograph of Teddy Ginn here. Uh-huh. And I got the 14 national title right here. So right here would be a good one for maybe Kyle 2020. Michigan. <laughs> or, no, it was Nomad that said it. I can actually see the Discord chat now. Uh, yes. Nomad. Uh, Kyle has one of those wives who tells him what he can and can't do with the interior of their home. <laughs> I, on the other hand, All right, let's not am a child. That. Let's not get into that. <laughs> no, I'm, listen, as far as all of that goes, she's the one that's right, and I'm the child. It's <laughs> just so we're clear. <laughs> all right, Kyle, Kyle, national championship game. This is not, yes. this is not a time for shenanigans. Uh, let's mm-hmm. get right into it. Kyle, it is time. What is it time for? It is time to... See what no, no, Saban's Kyle. daughter's saying? No, Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> oh, okay. Kyle. Do I need to do the setup? All right, let's do the setup. Kyle, did you say Miami? Mm, did I? No. Maybe I did. You didn't. Did you say national title game? I know I did. Okay. Uh, did you say Bama? No. Did you say, look at us? Yes. Look at us. <laughs> so what does that mean? It is time, everybody, to know your enemy. There we go. I had to I had to poke and prod you a little bit, but we got there. Know your enemy. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Ye freaking ha. Six years later. Six years later. They're back at it again. Here we, Alabama. Go. Here we go. This time, actually, in the national title game, which is yes, fun. This time, no, no semis. This time, we're back in it. Yeah, we got. This is it. This is this is for the title. It's. I feel a lot. Like if we were doing, if we had the podcast before the 2014 championship game. Yep. And trying to compare it, then to this one, I feel a lot more confident in 2014 than this one, just because of what we know with this team with, with back in 2014 with Oregon, we knew who Oregon was. We knew Ohio state with how well like momentum they had with just running all over uh, Wisconsin, just the tough, tough battle with Alabama and be like, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. But here we are, 2000 and the 2021 national title, 2020 national title here. This is this is a really tough game. You got you got Heisman winner Devonte Smith, mm-hmm. Mac Jones, who's just making all the right decisions, and Najee Harris, just a just a beast at running yeah. back there. I mean, he's he's your typical. Alabama running back, you we typically see he's that bruiser. He'll just pound it right at you. Six yard, six yards a carry. Over two hundred rushes this year. Over two hundred carries. That's that's an Alabama running back right there for you. So here's my first question for you, Kyle. Mm-hmm. 
Travis Etienne or Najee Harris? Who, who, who do you like more? Who would you rather have on your team? Who are you more afraid of? I, I, cho- cho- choose your choose your own frame. But who am I more afraid of? It's Devonte Smith. I, I'm more oh, afraid no, of was, Devonte Smith. I was talking about ETN versus uh, Harris. Strictly running backs. Oh, I I was afraid more of um, ETN. Honestly, I don't think you're right. <laughs> I. Okay. I I I think I might like ETN more if we project I think him to he's the... more dyna- he's more dynamic. Yeah. And he's I they use him a lot more in different ways than with um with Harris where he's just your typical typical Alabama running back. Like I said over 200 carries for yeah. for this year. No that means Najee Harris has 32 catches a game, which is not nothing. Not a game. Not thirty-two catches a game <laughs> this season. Excuse me, thirty-two catches this season. Uh, so that, I mean that's nothing. That's not that's not, that's not small. Uh, it's, he's not you know a pass receiver at, at running back mm-hmm. necessarily, but it's not nothing. And I do think. Are you getting? Are you getting sound, Kyle? Mm-hmm. I'm getting sound. There we go. It's gone. Um, Najee Harris is. I, I, uh, I like ETN more as a pro. I like ETN more as a pro for sure. I, I think I have more concern about Najee Harris and not necessarily because of Najee Harris, but maybe just the Bama offense as a whole. I like Bama's offensive line more than I like Clemson's offensive line. Um, I think that uh, I I do like Trevor Lawrence more than I like Mac Jones, but I like the Bama wide receivers more than I like the Clemson wide receivers. Probably what's more important, Jared. I like Alabama's offensive line than Clemson's offensive line. I mean, I said that, but yeah, (laughs) (laughs) it's, Ohio State has, is going to have to throw everything, everything at Alabama here. Well, so first piece of, I don't want to say good news because we're talking about a player injury, mm-hmm. but Alabama is down their center. Uh, he was yeah. lost in the Florida SEC championship game. And the it backup like is, they... I was saying the backup's fine. You know, yeah, I was going to say, then it seemed like that they missed a beat against Notre Dame. Uh, he, I actually went back, watched Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Bama, and obviously Notre Dame slaughtered them, but I don't think the center in particular, because I, I knew that was a storyline coming into this game, especially with Ohio State's defensive tackles being who they are. And with that center being as much of a rock for Bama as he is or was, that that might be an important storyline going into Ohio State. Can Ohio State's defensive tackles and COVID rumors being COVID rumors, but Ohio State has really good depth at defensive tackle. Can Ohio State continue their dominance that they had in the Clemson game of basically disrupting the Alabama offensive line from the inside out the same way that they did Clemson. Because if you want to, you know, Mac Jones is not Trevor Lawrence in many ways, but the way he's really not Trevor Lawrence is that Mac Jones is a stable quarterback uh, or stationary is actually the word I want. He's stable too. I'm sure he's stable, but he's a stationary quarterback. He's not going to be running. You're not going to get anything other than some desperation scrambles out of Mac Jones. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, can Ohio State get interior push? Can Ohio State's superior defensive tackles make hay against a backup center along the Bama offensive line? Yeah, that's that's definitely a good question because that that's what made the difference in the Ohio State Clemson game was that interior push. Yes. To really just make 
Trevor Lawrence uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, because the defensive ends, and I'm not ripping the defensive ends at Ohio State by any means. I thought uh, Tyreek uh, Smith had a really good game. I thought uh, Jonathan Cooper, Cooper had, had a really a good game. Good game. Um, but we were concerned about the defensive ends going into that game because of a pair of COVID outages. Um, Dark Sloop Bot making an appearance in the Sloop live chat. By the way, everyone watching on YouTube down here, uh, that's our Sloop live chat. Those are paying Patreon members uh, who are listening live and contributing to the show. Say hi, everybody currently in the live chat. <laughs> uh, but the um, what was I saying? Crap. Lost my lost my train of thought. Um, Ohio State made a lot of progress on the interior. Uh, so the defensive ends, that's what I was saying. The defensive ends at Ohio State did not make a real push and start making like real pass rushy plays against Trevor Lawrence until later in the game when Clemson was in a position in which they had to throw the ball because they were mm -hmm. no longer playing contain because they were they were not letting Trevor Lawrence run. So they were so they were playing more of a contain. The defensive ends were and not until later in the game when running wasn't really an option for Clemson anymore. that The defensive ends really sort of pin their ears back and go. So could we get more of a pass rush out of the defensive ends in this game because Mac Jones is not a running threat? It's a good point. Good point. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to compare and contrast Bama and yeah. Clemson right now, I think is my strategy for for going at this Bama game. Where is, you yeah, know, yeah, and this 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 where Alabama is Bama game, better it, than, different than, worse than Clemson and how does that affect Ohio State? But it's just really interesting this Alabama team. Typically when you think of Alabama it's just wearing you down on the ground using mm -hmm. their big talented offensive line to wear you down just typically yep. like Ohio State does. Did that's what Ohio State. That's what Ohio State normally does. I mean, look at the 2014 title. That's what they did, and you really yep. saw in the national title game against Oregon. Oregon just could not do anything. But then you look at Alabama's offense this year. The big thing here, Jared, and you look at the first stat of what we have in the notes here: passing yards per game, almost 350 yards per game, which is very unlike Alabama in typically. But with recent success in their quarterbacks, kind of like Ohio State. Yeah. Well, in their wide receivers. They just had very, very dynamic offense this year. Their wide the, the, the run of wide receivers at Alabama the past few years have been insane. And yes. Devonta Smith just won the Heisman. And deservedly so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1,500 reception yards in a season is ridiculous. So Kyle a wide receiver in the, in college football. All right. So we've been comparing, contrasting Alabama Clemson. We think mm -hmm. that Ohio States, even though I think I like Bama's offensive line more than I liked Clemson, Clemson's offensive line. I think that Ohio state can have similar success against Alabama's offensive line. So we're calling that one a bit of a wash. And as far as a wash goes, that's great for Ohio State. If Ohio State can get the same game from their front seven against Bama's offensive line that they did against Clemson's offensive line, that's great. That's that's an absolute mm -hmm. win. Um, I'm giving a nod to Najee Harris over ETN. Uh, and I don't necessarily think that's because ETN is worse. I just think Najee Harris is a better skill set matchup against Ohio State than etn is mm -hmm. uh yeah. trevor yeah. lawrence over mac jones I, I i don't think mac jones is bad i'm not going to be oh da, 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 da. mac jones he's not he's not bad but i think he's a product of his offense and his wide receivers more than he is on the same level as some of the better quarterbacks of this season i he finishes third in the heisman by the way uh, bama placed Three of the top five Heisman voters or votees. But I don't think Mac Jones is on the same level as Trevor Lawrence 
as Justin no. Fields, as Kyle Trask. Uh, he's not he's not that good. He's a very good quarterback, don't get me wrong, but he's not he's not that good. Mm-hmm. And that being well, said, I he's going to have success against Ohio State because I've seen mm-hmm. much worse quarterbacks have success against Ohio State this year. I mean, look at look at what we talked about all year was that we're going to see a lot of high scoring games here because of the limited practices and just just limitations overall because of the abnormal abnorm, of the unusual year that is 2020. And it's no different here with Alabama too. Passing defense, they're rated 79th. Not not really that good, but I mean Ohio State's not any better anyway. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to kid ourselves here that Ohio State has a better passing defense, but from Alabama. But I think that's where Ohio State can really um, succeed against this Alabama de- defense here is through the air. I think Ohio State can have success against this Bama defense, period. I don't think this, and again, I'm not saying that Alabama's front seven is bad. I'm not saying that. But by Bama standards, they're, again, by Bama standards, and we're talking like Bama's standards being up here, right? Mm -hmm. They're below average. They're a below average Bama defense. I don't think there's anyone extraordinarily special, um, maybe other than, say, Christian Harris. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anyone exceedingly special in the Bama front seven. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone in the front seven who particularly scares me. I think Ohio State's going to be able to run the ball. And I think they're going to be able to protect Justin Fields. Well, let me ask you this. Ironically, I like Alabama's secondary from a talent perspective a lot more than I like their front seven. But statistics tell me I probably shouldn't think that. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Jared, then. How many yards... Do you think Ohio State needs to rush? Or let me let me back let me back that up. How many yards do you think Sermon mm-hmm. needs to rush in order for you to be, in order for you to think that Ohio State's going to win the game? What what's that number? Like if they get if Sermon gets X amount of yards, Ohio State has a very good shot that they're going to win. Is the line a very good shot? Is that what let, the, let, 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 let's 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 125. say 125. What's that? Uh, 125 is a very good shot at winning. If he's okay. over 150, they have, that's, you know, you, you can't say they definitely would win, but I feel great if they, I feel real good if he gets 125. I feel great if he gets 150. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think if he, if, if Sermon gets over 150 yards, that means that they're able to run all run over this um, Alabama defense. They're able to move the ball efficiently. If he can't get the, if he can't get going here, which I can't see why he can't from what we've seen in recent games. Yeah. This Ohio state's going to really struggle offensively because then they're going to just be one dimension. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the biggest key in my mind. We're going into this game with Justin Fields, who throws for 385 and six touchdowns, right? We have Mac Jones, who is third place Heisman vote getter. You know, we have Devonta Smith, Heisman winner, quarterback, quarterback, wide receiver, Chris Olave, huge storyline, wide receiver. And by the way, it's modern college football, so we're always talking quarterbacks. We're talking about a game. Kyle, what's the over under currently at? 70. It was like 77. I will I will look real quick here, but it was 77. It's in the mid 70s. So we're all we're talking about a game in which, you know, both of the teams are expected to score over 30 points at or over 30 points. So obviously we're thinking passing. We're thinking about Ohio State's pass defense, which is terrible. We're talking about Alabama's pass defense, which is terrible. 
So obviously we're like, pass, 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 pass. I think, I think this game will actually be won by whichever running back has more running yards. Mm -hmm. 75 is the over under right now. It's gone down two points. Okay. So kind of referenced. So Zeke rushed for 230 against Mm -hmm. Alabama and Ohio State won by seven. Yeah. What? Ohio State won by how many? By seven against Alabama. I said one. Zeke had 230 yards and Ohio State won by seven points okay. against Alabama. Is that right? The final score was 42 to 35. Okay. But then in the Oregon game, Zeke had 246 in that game, too. I don't know just why, but 233 just, just sounded wrong to me. But regardless, um, the point here being that even though the quarterbacks and the wide receivers seem to be the storyline going into this game. I think the team that wins is if one team can run the ball and one team can't, and the, you know, a team has to become one dimensional. I think they're screwed. That's, that's sort of where I'm at. And again, I think both of these teams score a bunch of points. Yeah. No, I said I agree. it is. It's, it's so, going to be, I think it's going to be similar to like what we saw six years ago, like a 42 35 type of game. Yeah. I think that what I said, and I said this last week and it turned out not to be true. I acknowledge that, but I, I think this game comes down to a team having the ball with time about to run out and someone has to make a, someone has to make a play. Mm -hmm. I think that's where this goes. And I know I said it last week and I know it turned out to be wrong, but I like Bama more than I like Clemson. And I liked Bama a lot more than I liked Ohio State until last week where I I saw a different Ohio State team against Clemson than I saw all year. And that's the thing we kept hearing all, all week so far is what we saw last weekend, the true Ohio State team. And I yeah. say, yes, that is, that is the team. That's the team we knew had the potential to be and it showcase and it peaked. It's peaking right now. And this is the exact time that you want your team to peak is right at the end. So, Kyle, we said it last week, Ohio State had a decided advantage in the trenches against Clemson that proved out to be true. Do you think that's the case this week? Does Ohio State have the advantage in the trenches? That's tough. That's that's really tough. I can't sit here and just, I could be Homer and like, yeah, yes, Jared, yes, Ohio State dominates. I don't want you to do that. I want you to answer me honestly. I don't think either team, I don't think either team uh, has a significant advantage over each other on the, the trenches. Both have both have. I think Ohio State's offensive line is considerably better than than Alabama's defensive line. The the front seven in general. Yeah, I'll take Ohio State's. Yes, I'll take I'll take the Ohio State slobs over the Bama front seven. Right. Yeah. So let's break that down then. Yes, Ohio State's offensive line over Bama's defensive line. Okay. Now, vice versa. Um, I'm concerned about Ohio State's availability report. I'll just, we'll say it like that and leave it there along their defensive line. Uh, And I would normally say it was either a wash or Bama had the advantage, except again for them missing their starting center, which was, is a huge, huge loss for them, especially considering Ohio state's strength is along the interior of the line, in my opinion. Now, that being said, even if Ohio is missing a player, Uh, From the defensive tackles, I think they have really, really good depth in the defensive tackles. And I'm not saying that Togiai and um, Haskell Garrett aren't the two best defensive tackles, because I do believe they're the best two defensive tackles. I'm just saying that Ohio State has good depth in the defensive tackle area, and they can recover there. I also think they have really good depth in the defensive end area, And, you know, they were down two defensive ends last week. 
We'll see what happens with the availability report this week as far as maybe those players coming back or having new players missing. I I think Ohio State will be okay. Mm -hmm. Now, last we have heard, we saw Justin Fields go down with an injury, but only miss one play, come back in. Uh, No matter what the daughter of any coach of any team might have to tell you, he only missed one game and he's or one play and he's fine. Um. Yeah, you you pronounce Haskell Haskell, not not, not Pascal, not Pascal, not like Pedro Pascal. Um, or yeah, moving forward. <laughs> um, I I I I like I like Ohio State in the trenches this game. Mm-hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say, and that's what has me feeling good. I feel as good. I feel better right now than I did when we were doing this as a Clemson episode last week. I feel better. I feel better about Ohio State versus Bama than I did against Ohio State versus Clemson. Um, and I I say that not because I, I like Bama more than I like Clemson. I think Bama is a better football team. But I feel better about where Ohio State's at is, is the is the change mm-hmm. there. And I like what Ohio State can do with the with their offensive line. And, you know, on top of Justin Fields uh, having some injury issues, we also saw Wyatt Davis leave the game. Uh, he did not come back in, but it was very, very late in the game. So that's obviously worth noting. Paris Johnson came in, looked great. Uh, but I, I don't expect, I do not expect... Um, Wyatt Davis to miss any significant time this game and I expect the offensive line no matter who's in no matter who's in I expect the offensive line to do work Kyle right. do you want to talk I about think, the- I think now I think it's a good time for an ad read man we're a half hour in already we hey, Zeus. flying by here flying by oh time goes by quick when about- you're in the chicken cooker Let's talk about the little bit about the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared. Yes. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, we talked about why you should buy from them uh, veteran owned, Ohio based, fresh roast to order coffee. Uh, let's talk about some of that coffee. There's the Mom's Carrot Cake. It's a carrot cake flavored coffee. The Intense Blueberry is a blueberry flavored coffee. And Kyle, do you want to guess what the mint chocolate chip is flavored like? That's right, mint and chocolate chip. Now, Kyle, do you want to guess what the unicorn is flavored like? Not unicorn. No, the unicorn. Oh, yeah. not unicorn. Not, not it's, unicorn. It's, it's not. Okay. <laughs> I get what you're took saying you now. It took, took me a second. Uh, if you want to know, well, guess what everyone wants to know? Because you never know. You never know what's in the unicorn. It's an R&D bag. You're never quite sure what's going to be in it. And that's part of the fun. Kyle, we're getting audio again. Wait, what's... What's going on over there, buddy? Sorry, that's me. Whoa. Mute. Mute. Uh, that that shouldn't be that shouldn't be possible. <laughs> Gonna have to revisit those security settings. <laughs> 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 that's my fault. Uh, whoever said that. <laughs> uh I, I have to review the security settings. That shouldn't technically be possible. That's not your guys' fault. That's my fault. But we're talking about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, we went through some of those flavored coffees that are available. Uh, then we have to talk about the Fear No Evil, which is a dark roast. It's not just a dark roast. It's a black roast. It's roasted to the brink of flames. Um, it is dark, void of all light, in the sheen of polished armor. There's the Integrity, which is the mainstay Iron Bean Coffee. Um it, it it makes a great espresso, super dark roast, fantastic coffee. And again, you can buy all of these coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian is still serving up great seasonings, even with the weather, even with winter coming here and coming in quick. You can still get your um, great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, some of the great seasonings. Um, let's let's go with the what's over at the sweet heat here. The four horsemen, the discord, the two border, and the old fashioned. Jared, 
Which of those do you like the best? Oh, sorry. What was the options again? It is the Four Horsemen, the Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned. They're all just completely different. How? I mean, you have the, the answer two- is all of them. The answer is all of them, Jared. All of them are your favorite. They're they're all my favorite. You're, you're going to get an anger email from the Mad Canadian. Oh man! Be sure be sure to check out all the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ dot com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ dot com. Be sure to use the promo code Sloopcast ten Sloopcast one zero at checkout for ten percent off your entire order be sure to also check out all the social medias twitter facebook of the mad canadian to figure out where he and his food truck are heading next mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered all right Kyle, that's our ad reads uh do you want to take a roll you want to take a roll through the alabama schedule or maybe you take a look at their defense where, where you want to go next um well, let's let's look at their schedule here Let's look at their schedule. Okay. It's every every game is tough. Every is it, game is, is a massive game because it's SEC, right? Well, that's that's what they tell us. Um, okay. Now, here's the thing: uh, a lot of conversation about schedules. So, Nick Saban, uh, not quite as bad as Dabo, but Nick Saban keeps Ohio State outside of his top four. Uh, why? Because they only played six games. So we're, we're, we're talking a lot about schedules and all that. So very important. So let, let, let's, let's go through it. Powerhouse Missouri. Eh, good game. Good game against Missouri. They slam Texas A&M, who Texas A&M still thinks they belonged in the playoffs, despite the fact they are wrong. Now, here, here's one of the more interesting notes on the schedule to me. Mm-hmm. They allow Ole Miss, who is terrible. To score 48 points. 48 points scored by Ole Miss. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin. But I'd like to point out that they did not, Ole Miss did not continue to go on to score a bunch of points all season. It's not like, Ole Miss, it's not like Lane Kiffin turned Ole Miss into an offensive juggernaut overnight. Mm -hmm. This was not, like I said, it's not a thing we continued all year. So then they go and they play Georgia. Georgia, who still had Stenson Bennett as their quarterback at the time, puts up 24 points, but Bama rolled over them offensively, which is, if we're going through this, that's that's the constant takeaway is that Bama scores points. Absolutely. And, and their, their defense. We, we even, eh. one, one thing we even failed to mention, Jared, is that we is that Alabama may get their second um, wide receiver back, Jalen Waddle. That, that, that's another addition. No, that's total. I know, I know rule number one. I know rule number one applies here. Right, but if, let's, let's, if he were, if let's he talk were about Waddle. to play. Let's talk about Waddle. Let's do okay. it. Waddle uh, hasn't played in. Did he go out in the second game? First game. Maybe. Anyone in the chat remember? You got Michigan Bucknut typing. Uh, Jalen Waddle uh, has. Nope, it's, it's the fourth game. No, it's the fourth game. He He missed part of the Georgia game. But he went out here, in the Georgia at, game. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. So four games. He he played in four games here. You ready? Missouri, eight catches, 134 yards, two touchdowns. Okay. Texas A&M, five catches, 142 yards, one touchdown. Yep. Ole Miss, six receptions, 120 yards, no touchdowns. Okay. Georgia, six receptions, 161 yards, one touchdown. Waddle is a very, 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 very very good wide receiver. He's not going to play in this football game. Okay. I, I don't believe it. And the reason I do not believe it is because I saw him on the sidelines at the Notre Dame game. He did not look like someone who was ready to be playing football. And But let's just say he is. And let's say uh, someone, uh, Gangland, in the in the chat says, you know, he is... Uh, 70% is the maximum possible. Okay, let's say he's at 70% right now. Let's say that's where he's at. 
Has he been practicing at 70% for the past four weeks? Like, you're not just going to step into the game, be in game shape. Like, might they dress him, put him in a uniform, and walk him out there as a decoy? Maybe? I don't even think that's going to happen. But do you think he's going to walk out onto the field after not playing, not practicing, and just be Jalen Waddle again? Not just any game, but the national title game. Total smokescreen. It's just Bama putting something out there to make Ohio State think. That's all it is. Just absolute right. dripping in mm. make Ohio State think about Jalen Waddle. It's not happening. And like yeah. I said, if it does happen, if it does happen, it's pure distraction mode. It was like mm. every time... Uh, during the 2015 season, every time they acted like Braxton Miller was going to throw the ball on a reverse and then he didn't, it's that. That's, that's, that's it. Okay. All right, moving on here. Rest of the games, Jared. Yep. They beat Georgia 41-24. Yep. Good, good, good win. Good win there. Yeah, absolutely. They, Georgia's, they, Georgia's they, a talent-rich destroy, team, but Stenson Bennett was their quarterback. Destroyed Tennessee, Mississippi State, and Kentucky. Right. In Auburn, who was terrible this year, in LSU, who was terrible this year, in Arkansas, who was terrible this year. Like there's, there's not. I, I'm not one to like poo poo on the SEC and be like, oh, the SEC is bad. Actually, now the SEC typically, from top to bottom, I think is the most consistently talented, good conference in college football. I do believe that to be true. That being said. The SEC West was garbage this year. Who was in the SEC West other than Bama? Texas A&M? No one's believing that. No one believed Texas A&M except for Texas A&M. They should have lost their bowl game. They, they really should Could've. have. Uh, LSU, garbage this year. Auburn, mm -hmm. garbage this year. Arkansas, garbage every year. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss and Mississippi, fun. We got a we got a couple kooky coaches over there in Mississippi, but it doesn't mean they're good football teams. Yep. And then I, finish up the seat. I think the SEC East was better this year than the SEC yeah, West. With Florida here, as I was about to get into the uh, conference championship game, playing Florida there, Florida tacks on a late uh, touchdown to make it appear close. Uh, then they just dominated the Notre Dame game that last seven point. It was really 31 seven Notre Dame just scored a touchdown at the end of the game there. Um, yes, you're right. Nomad. It's our Kansas. Get it right. It's our Kansas. No, no. Okay. No. But yeah, overall it's overall as much as, Ohio State fans don't want to hear it's it is a much better schedule than what Ohio State's played. I mean, who was Ohio State's best team they played before Clemson? Northwestern? I it, by the way, I still stand by the fact that Northwestern's pretty damn good. Yeah. But I don't think as good as Georgia or Florida. They're not as talented as Georgia. I think Georgia is an immensely talented football team, but they they never put it together. That's that's just my opinion on Georgia. They don't they recruit mm -hmm. amazingly well, but what do they ever do with any of it? Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, had they start had they actually started proper quarterbacks? Had they started Justin Fields? Had they started um I'm going to blank on his name, but the actually good quarterback from USC who they eventually started playing this year, but they wasted their first half of the season and ruined the entire season on Stenson Bennett. Kirby Smart has ruined Georgia football by playing three-star quarterbacks with five-star quarterbacks on the bench. Mm -hmm. Josh Daniels. Thank you. So, Bama, superior schedule, would you say? Would you say that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I don't think I'll tell you this much, though. I don't think that Bama, if we're, if we're going ones for ones, Bama doesn't have as good a victory as Clemson. 
I mean, as Ohio State over Clemson is what I mean by that. Yes. We're going one for ones. All right. Alabama. Kyle, they're, I love their defensive backs. I like their defensive backs so much more than I like their front seven. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, if we, if we take a look here. Patrick Sertan, Jr., amazing NFL player. Josh Joby, great defensive back, great corner. Daniel Wright, serviceable Alabama safety. Jordan Battle, a guy I really wish Ohio State had right now. Should have had him, almost had him. Great player. Yet. Yet. Alabama is also terrible, terrible this year against the pass. Now, the question I have for you, Kyle, does that mean that they are bad against the pass? Or have they just been up? Have they just been so far ahead in all of the games that teams have been forced to just go ham and pass on them? Definitely a good possibility. I mean, you look at the uh, look at the Ole Miss game. Almost 400 yards passing in that game. Uh, but all the other ones, yeah, it's got to be you you beat um, Tennessee by 31 points. You beat Mississippi State by 41. Kentucky by 60. Your rival by 29 points. Your other rival by almost 40 points. Yeah, they're, they're going to start passing on you late and often. And even the Florida game in the SEC championship game. How many how many yards did Florida? A Florida? ton. A metric ton. I don't have it. In metric front of me. ton? Metric. Over 400 ton. yards. Um Trask through. How many okay, but let's 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 play this fair on how many attempts? Because we 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 played that same game on the Monday episode with Trevor Lawrence. 40 attempts. I'm okay with 40 yards from a talented quarterback, which Kyle Trask is. I'm okay with 400 yards if it takes them 40 attempts to do it. Yep. Uh, let's see. Points per game, Kyle. Points per game. Ohio mm-hmm. State, 43 and a half. Alabama, 48. Mm-hmm. Points allowed per game. Ohio State, 21. Bama, 19 and a half. So, Bama... Uh, an okay lead scoring points pretty even on points allowed yep total yards ohio state five i'm gonna round that up to 545 mm-hmm. bama 535 call that a top. Darn close. 10 10 yards in the grand scheme of things is nothing mm-hmm. yards passing ohio state 272 bama 350 Advantage Bama. Rushing yards per game. Ohio State, 272. Probably should round that up to 273, but I I just enjoy having 272 twice. Alabama, 186. Ohio State. Significant difference there. Advantage Ohio State. Allowed. Yards allowed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speed through this a little bit more. Basically even on yards allowed in total. Passing yards allowed. Ohio State 263. Alabama 234. Slight advantage, Bama. We'll give Bama the slight advantage there. Rushing yards allowed. Ohio State 98. Excuse me, 97. Bama 108. Slight advantage, Ohio State. What is all of what are the, all of this I'm trying to say? It all looks kind of even to me. I think both teams have troubled secondaries despite having talent. I think both teams, by the standards that they set with their own depth of talent at the university, so I'm not saying that these that they're bad, but I'm just saying by Ohio State and Bama standards, both of these teams have average front sevens. There's no Chase Young in this game. There's no Darren Lee in this game. 
There's no high tower in this game. There's, I, I don't think there's any truly exceptional players in either front seven, except maybe Ohio State with with say Togiai and and Garrett. They both have great running backs. Ohio State advantage quarterback. They both have great wide receiving cores. Ohio State's, I think, is a little deeper, but I think that Bama obviously has the best single wide receiver in the game. Jared. Yeah. What about the tight ends? What about the tight ends? Year of the tight end, baby. It's the year of the tight end. And I don't know. Do what do you think, Kyle? Is uh is it is his advantage Ohio State in the tight end area? Because spoiler alert, it is. Ohio State wins. Year of the tight end. That's the tiebreaker, right? <laughs> that is. That's the tiebreaker. That's the difference there is the tight end. All right, Kyle. Let's get into some Ask Sloopcast questions. <laughs> On sure, that note. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, going down here. Um, a couple of these were from the previous episode that we didn't get to, but they was more related to Alabama here. So I'll sure. we'll read some from previous ones. So, all right. Uh, first, we have Nomad. Nomad asks, hey, Jared, can we get a fuck you, Dabo? You sure this isn't from last week? Nope. It's from this week. Okay, hold on. I have a new feature I'm going to play with real quick. Oh, no. Jared's breaking stuff. Fuck you, Dabo. <laughs> All right, in game Kyle, land. Kyle, you, you do it. You do it. You you have to do it now. Fuck you, Dabo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any land, idea what yes. I just did? No. Okay. Um, well, I tell you this much. I, I think the uh, Sloop Cats liked it. All right. Gangland asks us here, Jared, <clears throat> the Buckeyes were to blow Bama out of the water. Could that cause Saban to reconsider his time left in Tuscaloosa? Uh, in, what, in, in, in which way? Is, does it motivate him to come back and fix things to not go out on a sour note? Or does he say, ah, screw it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, let the new guy... Ryan Day's the new guy. He's 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 the next generation guy. I'm just going to let him have the crown. In which direction are we talking? Well, well, especially with his offensive coordinator not being there next year either. Well, he he's used to that. Mm -hmm. Saban recycles well, I'm, I'm, I'm offensive just, I'm coordinators. Just saying, I'm just saying I don't think he that's changes. Gonna... Nick Saban changes his offensive coordinators more often than I change my sheets. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um no I'm, I'm just saying that because i'm leaving it makes me think that that i don't think what happens in this game here he's he's coming back yeah yeah this is not yeah. this is not our last our yeah. last look at saban all right um michigan bucknut three-part question he says here um did Jamison Williamson solidify himself as a second deep threat during the during the uh, Clemson game? So uh, we, it's, do, could, we, could we see Jam more of Jamison Williams in this game? My my thought on Jamison Williams is that had we had a normal offseason, we would have more Jamison Williams. Mm -hmm. I, I think a younger guy maybe didn't quite. They didn't quite get him rolled into the offense and they didn't have the cupcake games and they didn't have just like games and uh, enough games in general. I think we would have seen Jameson Williams is one of those guys that had this been a normal 10 game season, we would have seen him come along in like games eight, nine, 10. Uh, so maybe, but I tell you what, they put it on film and I think that's the most important thing. The most important thing is that they established Jamison Williams as a deep threat on film. So that's now something Bama has to be aware of. And mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. And I do expect a lot of people to be transferring out of the Ohio State wide receiver room this offseason. And I do not expect Jamison Williams to be one of those guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. He also asks here of the... Uh, uh, will having two deep threats be too much for Alabama secondary or help open up the run game? 
Uh, I mean, either I, or. I, mean, why not? I really think just even having Garrett out there, too. You have Garrett and Olave out there is enough pressure on the defensive backs to really open it up. But, okay, so let's, let's talk about opening things opening things up on on defense. Typically, when we talk about like opening, we talk about like moving the safeties back. Oh, deep mm-hmm. threats, safeties have to move back. Safeties have to move back. The safeties can't be involved in the running game as much. But that's not that's not the only way you open things up. You know how else you open things up? You make the linebackers look twice at the tight ends. You make the linebackers go out to the flats, maybe not backwards, but maybe out to the flats with the tight ends. Another thing Ohio State has done to open up their running game and continue to open up this running game potentially into the national title game is by making Alabama respect the passing threat that is the tight ends. Yes, Nomad, year of the tight end. Mm -hmm. It's official. It's been foretold for centuries at Ohio State. Not since, not since we saw Ricky Dudley have we seen a year of the tight end at Ohio State. It's a thing of legend. It's a thing that's been foretold. Yes. But we've yet to see it. It's been a very long winter. But summer is coming. All right. Austin Formation, a couple of questions here from him. What did Clemson do well that Bama will try to replicate? And what did Ohio State do well that... What did Ohio State do well, and what will Bama possibly try schematically to stop it? Or is it just players on players? Okay, as I'm sorry, I, I'm i not saying the question. I'm not saying anything bad about the question. I'm just saying I didn't follow that. <laughs> Can you say that again for me? What did, what did Clemson do well that Alabama will try to replicate? Okay. What did, uh, what did Clemson... I, I don't know if schematically... Uh, Let me just say, let me say this plainly, and I'm sorry, Ohio State. Nothing. Because you don't need to schematically fool Ohio State. The secondary isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Your wide receivers are going to get open against Ohio State's secondary. That's it. And uh, and you know what? I'm actually kind of cool with that. Because I'm actually kind of cool with that because that's always been the case. Indiana passed well against Ohio State, Northwestern, hell, even Michigan State passed well against Ohio State. Like, it's just it's just a thing. It's just it's a given. Mm -hmm. So like, hey. Alabama has a really good quarterback and really good wide receivers, and they're going to pass well against Ohio State. So has everybody else. It's fine, except except Michigan State. Uh, When Michigan State's backup quarterback came in, he was getting he was (laughs) getting numbers against Ohio State. (laughs) (laughs) so like whatever it's just kind of whatever again like with clemson then but don't break pull back don't let anything go keep your linebackers up stop the run let bama get those 10 yard passes it's fine play a deep play a deep quarters everything will be fine i mean you you have to here because i mean look how accurate i mean how ridiculous accurate mac jones has been all season he is a he's thrown 77 percent all year 77 percent, which is ridiculous yeah he is just on target like against notre dame only five incomplete passes against um let's see here against lsu he was 24 28 here he was 33 for 43 against florida um his worst game with 66% passing. He's going to make he's going to make plays here. He's going to be able to make um he's going to be able to complete the pass left and right here just kind of like what we thought Trevor Lawrence was was going to do and really did against Ohio State, but it's going to be just like what Michigan Bucknut said and you said Jared, bend but don't break here. Force force Alabama to make those mistakes mental mistakes, whatever the case may be then. Uh, Michigan Buckner asks, but what about when he's under pressure? And again, that's where Ohio State's veteran 
skilled, deep defensive tackles come into play against a soggy interior for Alabama's offensive line. Mm -hmm. You get pressure in his face. He does not have the athleticism to get away from it the way, say, Trevor Lawrence did. Put a ton of pressure on Trevor Lawrence. Only got like two sacks out of it. But it's fine because you disrupted him and you disrupted the offense. And he's athletic and he's big and he got out of a lot of situations that a lot of quarterbacks would have been sacked in. But Mm -hmm. Mac Jones does not have that sort of athleticism to get out of those plays. Yep. Does that answer your question, Michigan Bucknut? Well, that question was... um, It was in the chat. I read it from the chat. One last question from Austin Formation here. What would be a perfect split of carry slash pass attempts for the upcoming game against Bama? Or do we need to see how Bama plans to attack the offense first? First, I'd say... The first the first thing you want to do is sort of set the tone. Don't I I think Ohio State's offense is good enough and matches up well enough against Alabama's defense that I'm not I'm not starting the game with what are they gonna let us have? I'm gonna start the game running the ball. And if they wanna stop us, stop us. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm glad that Ohio State stuck to their plan, even though their first drive against Clemson, three and out, yeah. they did they did three runs and they punted the ball. Yeah, and they stuck to it. They which, did the, you know what they did the following game or the following um, drive? Yeah, they passed, but they still ran the ball, and that yep. led to the first score with Trey Sermon. Yeah, I uh, yeah no uh, that was. One of Ryan Day's best bits of coaching, that entire game, but also to have the maturity that he's a young coach. This is only his second year as a head coach to have a game plan of run the ball, go three and out on the first drive right after Clemson went down and scored. To then have the maturity to be like, no, we're sticking with the game plan. I know Clemson's winning. I know we went three and out the first time, but we're going to stick to the game plan. We're going to run the football on the second drive as well. And I think that's the sort of thing that seems obvious when you say it out loud, but is a lot harder to do when you're actually in that situation and you're the one actually calling the plays. It's, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's really, really easy to say that you should do stick your game plan it's real easy to say i'll say it again stick your game plan see how easy that is to say to actually do that in that situation ryan day deserves a lot of credit and i think he has to do the same thing here i think ultimately you end up passing the ball a lot more because i think that's the type of game this is going to be it's going to be a lot of points but early in the game let's let's make them take trey sermon out of the game because the last thing you want in this game is to become one dimensional. That's what killed Clemson. And that's what will kill either of these teams if they do it. This will be a game won by the quarterbacks on the stat book. But you have to, have to, have to remain two dimensional in this football game. Mm-hmm. I mean, just for comparison, against Clemson, our state threw the ball 28 times. Mm hmm. Rushed it 44 times. Well, I skewed because of the fact that they were up. So yes. you get into the fourth quarter and they're primarily just running. So you, you always have to sort of, I wonder what that, I, I don't suppose. And if you can't, if you can't get it in 10 seconds, don't worry about it. What would that, what did that breakdown look like in the first half? Yeah, and again, I'm not asking you to actually find that, but I'm just, I'm curious what that would be. You, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because it, it's yep. so, because Ohio State had won that game a third, two thirds of the way through the third quarter, and, you know, we're in clock run out mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any more questions, Kyle? No, that is all the questions. So that brings us to the ultimate question, Jared. Yeah. Ohio State, Alabama. Yeah. It does. Before you before you do the final score, because I think is that what you're about to ask? Kyle? Uh oh. 
I'm losing. We're having technical issues. Is it me or is it Kyle? Who's down? Do you not hear me? Oh, I hear you now. Okay. That Michigan Bucknet says uh, you're the problem. I don't know what happened, but we're good. Well, your camera is still fuzzy. Can you turn your camera off and turn it back on? Sure. Okay, I see your camera is off. And we're back. Awesome. All right, Kyle, All right. before we do final score, before we do final score, what position matchup is the most important position matchup in this game? Uh, the I'm going to say f- for Ohio State or just in total? In total for the game. What position matchup? Okay, Michigan Bucknet, you can't just say the trenches. You have to be more specific than that. Yeah, that's which, why I asked which that side? question. First. Which side? Whose offense versus whose defense? I, I think it's Ohio State's defense versus Alabama's offense. Alabama's defense. Wait a minute. No, Ohio State's defense, Alabama's offensive line. I'm going to say it's the other way around. I think this is a game in which points will be scored. You can't say both, Nomad. That is cheating. You have to pick one. Cheaters. I, I, I think Alabama's going to score points in this game, period. Alabama's going to score points in this game, period. So... To me, what's important is that Ohio State scores enough points to keep up with them. And so by that standard, by that evaluation, the, the standard and evaluation, they're both the, the incorrect words to use here, but just roll with me. I would pick Ohio State's offensive line versus Bama's defensive line. Sign stealers versus play callers. That was last week, Nomad, but that's a good try. All right. Well, over under is 75. And what is it here? I'm just refreshing here. It is a seven and a half point favorite for uh, for Alabama. Uh, Michigan Bucknut says he changes his answer and he's on my side now. He All was right. originally with you, Kyle. Now he's on my side. Team Jared. I, see I got some Team Jared's in the chat. I see how it is. The emojis won't show up on the thing, but I still want to see them over here. I want some. T- there All we right. go. All right. All right. All right uh, over, under. What do you have? Over, under. 76 points. 75 points. I have over. 75 points. I have over. I'm going to go over as well. All right. Now, seven and a half. Here's the question. Yeah. Does Ohio State cover? Yes. Does Ohio State win? Yes. I feel less confident about that. Ooh, listen to that tone again. I. It, this is a good Bama team. I think it's a human yeah, Bama I know, team. I, I think Bama's had much, much better teams. It's still Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Ohio State does win it. But I just, it, I, I, I said this in the Discord today. I feel as good as you can feel about playing Bama. But it's still Bama. I feel so good about it. In fact, I think Ohio State wins by four points, four points, which is a win. <laughs> and when it comes to beating, I mean, how, how many national titles has Bama won in the past? Won or claimed? In the past 10 years. You Let me finish my sentence. <laughs> in the playoff, oh, no, not the playoff era, but like in the, in since Saban's come to town. Five? Five, four, five, five, I think five. They are the dominant team. Let's not pretend that they aren't. They are the dominant team in college football. And we keep trying to replace them and we keep trying to say Clemson's the new Bama or LSU's the new Bama, but it's not. It's Bama. Not until Saban's gone. Even then. That being said, Ohio State can win this football game because I believe they have the advantage on both sides of the line. And that is the most important thing in college football. And on top of that, Kyle, when in doubt, I think this is rule three. I think this is rule three on the podcast. Rule rule one. Yes, we are setting setting it. Rule one, don't trust, uh, the doctor always lies. Rule two, don't real life gamble. Rule three, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. And Justin Fields is the superior quarterback. Yep. And that's why I'm picking Ohio State. 
I have the final score, Jared, which I think is the same spread as kind of what you just said. I have Ohio State, magic number 42. Oh. Bama 38. Did we just pick the same? It's, it took until what is it, episode 38 of season six. It took this long, but we finally picked the same final score. <laughs> 42 to 38 is the official Sloopcast prediction for the first time ever. Wow. It finally happened. That has to be a good sign, right? Or a terrible sign. Yes. Oh, no. Is it a terrible sign? I don't know. Oh, but we'll figure yeah. it out. We'll figure it out. We'll find out Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Cool. Oh, this <sighs> is fun. We this did is it. fun. Um, we did it. Definitely nerve wracking. I mean, we still got a number of days still till the um, national title game. Yeah, we normally. Yeah. For us, it's still like five days away. We're not, we're not used to doing these so far in advance, but we're just trying to stick to the Monday Friday mm -hmm. schedule for now. So, by the way, we will not be I, releasing I guess, an episode. We will not be releasing an episode next Monday. That would be stupid. So, uh, one episode next week, and it will come out. It'll come out Wednesday if we win, and Thursday if we lose. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> That's a total joke. But it was funny. Uh, it'll be out. Uh, let's just say it'll be out Wednesday, right, Kyle? There, there's a there's a question for you, Jared. If the Buckeyes win, do we get an anchors up? I don't know. Is Suncard still in the chat? No, he left. Oh, he left. After he, screwed, after he screwed it up, he left. Oh man, I tell you what. No, Michigan Butt's not saying please. We're getting a please from Michigan Bucknut. We are. All right. If Ohio State wins, if Ohio State wins the title, if Ohio State wins the title, the next episode I will start with the classic Sloopcast anchors up. You heard it here, folks. There you go. I will do it. I will do it. All right. Anything else before we end today's episode, Jared? Uh no, sir. Uh everyone in the chat. I think is is very happy about the potential. You guys realize you're not going to like give two shits because Ohio State will have won a national title and how I start the podcast will become incredibly irrelevant to you, right? Do do you know that? <laughs> there are much more important things at play here. But I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. All right. Uh uh, where are we time? Why? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let's end this thing. Kyle, uh, -huh. uh, make sure to visit. I'm talking directly to you, Kyle. Make sure to visit the Uh, make sure to join us on the discord server. You can see our wonderful people down here joining us on the discord server. Uh, now in order to participate in the live chat and do the live listen in, you do have to be a patron, but thank you, Jug. Jug says the Discord is awesome. Jug's our bot mod on the Discord server. He, he's in charge of our bots. Um, in order to do the live listen-ins and, in, and to do the uh, on-screen chat, you do have to be a patron, but it's only $3 a month. That's a candy bar. Like the next time you go to buy gas, don't get a candy bar. And then, then you're part of the Sloop Cat family. Michigan Bucknet says he is so happy he joined. So. There you go. And just it's a thing to consider. Um, and if not, there are many parts of our Discord that are free. Most of the Discord is free. There are some private channels, but most of the Discord is free. So come check it out. If you like it, if it's a thing you think you want to be a part of, then you can join. And then you can sort of get into the premium channels, including all of this stuff. Uh, but again, if you go to the sloopcast.com, um, you can access all the free channels and um or you know you, i'm I'm losing it kyle you know what screw it end the episode go to sloopcast.com there's merch there's social media pages there's the discord there's the patreon uh there's all that crap that's it i i'm i'm done talking kyle what's in kyle's corner um well to kind of get us through until uh monday night's uh, game you can check out ohio state basketball 
this Saturday at noon, tentatively, uh, against Rutgers. Again, Saturday at noon, Ohio State taking on Rutgers. There you go. Uh, the you know we didn't had a chance to talk basketball much, but the Penn State game was was canceled um, or postponed. I don't know. I don't know the difference anymore. Who knows? Twenty twenty. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's is that it for Kyle's corner? That's it. We're we're really long here, so let's go ahead and end the show. Okay. Tonight's ending music is by. Mr. Anderson, uh, they're a uh, Columbus-based hip-hop group, so be sure to check them out. There will be links down in the show notes for all of that. Um, Nomad, one of our mods, uh, lets us know that 2020 is over. We're in 2021 now. Kyle, I changed my mind. It's Ohio State 152 to 38, because it's 2021 now, and it is the year of the tight end. And Ditka. All right. So no, 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 no. Minutes. Go back to the original prediction. Go back to the. I can't. I can't have us not have the same prediction. It finally happened. Damn it! All right. Uh, Ohio State, Bama national title. Let's do this. But for right now, we're going to end the show with Mr. Anderson. Uh, please be sure, like I said, to check out all the show notes uh, for information on them. Um, if you, if you're a new listener to this the actual we always talk about the music being played the music is played on the actual podcast but youtube's youtube so instead of music um we're just going to have a, a brief conversation with our, our youtube people instead uh that is normally pretty worthless but it's it's still special so what are you going to do so with all that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again, this is Mr. Anderson. I almost used it, Kyle, because your camera mm -hmm. got all frozen. I no, almost used I'm it. Good. And by it, I mean. But I did get to use this. I'm pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. And I did get to use this. And I'm pretty happy about that. Nice. I got I got I got the new computer set up and I'm still I'm just just starting to learn all of the fun stuff OBS can do. That's how we got the live chat down here. Uh that's that's thanks to OBS. It's the software I use to do all of the Yeah. It's the stuff I use to do all the stuff. It's it's basically what all the Twitch people use. Uh and I'm like I said, I'm just starting to scratch the surface of what it can do. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and is, is that it? I think that's our private YouTube conversation. It's just me talking about OBS and all of the slight modifications to our, our visual presentation here. Do you have anything else, Kyle, or do you want to end the show? Let's, let's go ahead and end it. I got nothing else. <sighs> Thanks, Jug. Uh, we can have a, we're going to have a detailed conversation about the audio if you can tolerate it, because I will talk your ear off about all the audio, but I'm not going to do it with the mic actually on because it's, it's, it's already too much. So, all right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. Once again, I'd like to thank Mr. Anderson for ending today's show. And I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company, who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company, for sponsoring today's show. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee roaster headquartered out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. All of their beans are fair trade certified, USDA organic. Integrity is what they do. Marine owned, mom and pop owned. Pay cups available, gift cards available, free shipping over $50 available. And if you find that one coffee, you find that one coffee that is your coffee, you can save money with a subscribe and save service. Kyle, some of my personal favorite coffees so far, and I'm, I have not tried them all yet, but some of my favorite ones so far are the Ride or Die, which is a gentle and distinctive version of the American classic coffee, uh, breakfast coffee. Uh, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with suburb smoothness and flavor. I also really like the cast iron, which is a medium roast coffee made with single origin Arabica beans. Kyle, 
You know what's so special about the uh, the cast iron? It's the coffee it's in the coffee and Q. Maybe you can tell us about the coffee Q here in about 20 seconds. But uh, Iron Bean Coffee is who we're talking about right now. And uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company is, a, in fact, America's local coffee roaster. And if you want to see all of the wonderful coffees they offer, including some dark roast, some medium roast, some flavored coffees, you can visit ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I already said that, but oh well. This episode also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. As Jared said before, the Coffee and Q, one yeah. of Jared's favorite. Put it on. What do you, what do you put it on, Jared? What do you, what do you Everything. use the Coffee and Q on? Everything. I, beef. <laughs> I, I primarily use it on beef. Um, it's, it's also really good on eggs because it's just like you're having coffee with your eggs, except that's coffee on your eggs. And it's, it's, it's I like it. Or if I tell you what, if you're broiling, if you're doing a, a bacon broil, you go with the coffee and cue on that too. But if you're doing a bacon broil and, and you kind of like that candied bacon thing, I'd actually probably suggest mm-hmm. the two border. I'm hungry. Okay. Yeah. Is it breakfast time yet? <laughs> coffee and cue. It's a blend of coffee and barbecue seasoning that offers just the right about of coffee flavor and barbecue flavor that will add add that something extra to your food. Another great thing that I was talking with the Mad Canadian earlier today, Jared, the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Now, I I like myself a good buffalo chicken pizza. Okay. Get some of that uh, Frank's buffalo sauce. Mm-hmm. Put it on. Mm-hmm. Get some shredded chicken. Uh-huh. Mix that chicken with some Four Horsemen there. Okay. Get that chicken roux seasoned there. Okay. Kyle, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That sounds mm-hmm. real spicy. I love the, it. <laughs> I love you're, it. <laughs> you're doing you're doing the four horsemen mm-hmm. on a buffalo chicken pizza that's just a sauce. Little bit. That's just a, a little bit. It's a lot. That's I mm-hmm. mean, I'm just saying like your okay. spicy stuff if you're gonna do that one. You 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 like gotta it. make sure you gotta make sure you like your spicy foods if you're doing that recipe. Mm-hmm. But then I put some celery on top too to help cool it down. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the celery fixes everything. <laughs> Yes, it does. Yeah. But the maybe throw some blue it's cheese. A really good. Maybe really throw good some blue cheese on there to cut the heat down a tad. The four horsemen sour cream. Really good seasoning. Yogurt if you're really feeling healthy. Ice up your chicken. Uh, be sure to check out all the other great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 